Amen. I'm glad you're here in the house. Today I'm down on the floor because I'm, I want to get right in your home with you. I want to come right in your back door, your kitchen. And uh, I'm excited about this series that we're getting ready to, to dive into. I believe it's of God. This has been stowed up in my spirit for several weeks now. And you know, as a pastor, when things are kind of stowed up and they're marinating for a while, there comes to a point you got to take the lid off of it, amen, and get it out. I believe this is a word not only for our church, but a word for this community. This is a word for, for our nation as a whole. How many are ready for the word today? How many are ready to receive the word of God today? Father, Lord, I just pray right now that every heart would be open and receptive. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of things that are preoccupying our thoughts, but Lord, I pray that we're present right now. We're right here. God, we're right here. God, and today we're drawing a line in the sand for this church, for this community, for this nation, starting right here at Center Point Church. God, a direction that you've put in our spirit and our heart to champion, to challenge, to encourage, to help see change come about, to reclaim. God, I know it's your heart. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. This is something that God has placed in my heart after several, several weeks, actually the last couple months, of just really going before God and saying, God, we, us as a church, and vision and direction, we can talk about a lot of different things and a lot of different ideas. And one of the things that I went to God for is just really defining again I believe God gives you vision and gives you directions even for seasons of life, but then the cloud moves on and the church must recognize it's time to move on. Us as a church, I don't want us to remain when God is moving. I don't want us to just do church or just to do things because that's the way it's been, or to focus on certain things maybe that God has allowed us for a season, but then when it's time to make the change that we're bold enough, that we trust him enough, and we're willing to say, God, we are ready to follow. And not only to follow, but God, we are ready to lead in the areas that you've called us to lead. One of the key things that he's put in my spirit, in my heart, so like I said, there's a lot of things at church we can do, a lot of events that we can do. Honestly, we could do things that would just maybe draw a crowd or whatever, but it's just doing things with really no impact. And I believe in the day and age today, people are hungry for something that's genuine, that's real, that's life-changing, that's going to make a difference in their life right where they are at. A lot of things we could do, to just to, like I said, as a church. But there's a few things that God has put on our heart. There's some things that we've been doing that we're no longer going to do. There's some things that we're not doing that we're going to do. We're not a church that can do it all. If you try that, your pastor probably wouldn't last very long and the congregation would be so worn out. And, but I believe God gives specific words. God gives specific plans for his church. And God has, I believe, spoken clearly again, some direction for our house. And one of the key areas that I feel strongly about is the family. You've heard me speak over the last several weeks that I believe where we are at today as a nation 
isn't necessarily because of our government. It isn't necessarily because of our schools. It isn't necessarily because of a lot of different things that we can maybe deflect and say this is the reason why we are where we're at. But I believe it's time that the church, I believe it's time that we wake up and realize the responsibility that God gave to us from the very beginning of time when it comes to this area. However, over time, I believe we've not done the best of job. We've neglected some things. We've not put value to it. We've gotten preoccupied. We've gotten busy of all these other things in life, and we've ignored the very thing that God first gave us the ability to lead and have oversight over it, and that's our families. Today we're starting a series, and we're calling it Reclaiming Our Families. Everyone say that. Reclaiming Our Families. Say it again. Reclaiming Our Families. If we don't address this, if we don't begin to focus on this, if we don't begin to make a change in this area, I promise you, nothing will change. What I'm I'm about to say is probably not new news to you. But family is important to God. Family is important to God. You may be here today and say, well, Pastor, my family has... They're all growing up and they've left house and, or, man, we're so far gone that there's no hope. I want to tell you that's a lie of the enemy. God at the creation of man. I believe it's important to him. And I believe because it's important to him that we've got to recognize and own it in our own lives, that it must be important to us. God first, but then family, is the foundation of where the church, in which the church, the nation, and all other God-ordained institutions are built. In fact, it's the only thing that proceeds. It's the only thing to proceed the home. The only thing to proceed the home is God. Let me say it that way. The only thing to precede the home is God. But right after that is family. Today I'm going to basically lay out a foundation the next couple weeks. And then our team, we're going to dive in from the very beginning of creation. Man and woman, we're going to take it all through the Bible when it comes to this area and go to Scripture. Amen? Amen. And we're going to help people understand. And maybe areas where we've gotten off track, maybe areas where we've let loose, we're going to realign ourselves. We're going to reclaim this in our lives. And I believe as we do, we'll begin to see change. We'll begin to see an awaken in in our homes. I believe the end time revival can begin in our homes. There's an expectation a lot of times that And I'm not saying it can't begin in the church, absolutely. But I think we've had it backwards for so long. We come to church, we the expectation of the church is I get saved at the church, my devotion is at church, my worship is at church. My family is taught the word of God at church. My kids are in children's ministry at church. And all of those things are great and we must have. But it doesn't take the place of the calling that God has placed in you and my life. And our number one priority in life is our families. Period. Is our families. You don't have to look too far, but we're living in crazy times. Satan's number one goal is to divide and destroy the family. When you divide something, there's no unity. When you divide something, you're weaker. 
When you divide something, you're less than if we were united. The enemy has targeted this area in our lives, in our culture. And today, the craziness that goes on in our world today, the lack of respect, authority, sin. Now the list can go on and on. And I'm not, I don't want to bring condemnation to you today, but I want you to get the reality of where we're at because there is hope. God is with us. God is for us. This is his plan. We're just going to go back and get into the word again and reestablish that in our lives, in our homes, amen, and live according to his plan and begin to see change. You look at the world, well, pastor, how, how can a little church, how can, how can we see change? How can we bring change? I'm telling you, it starts right in this house, one family at a time, one marriage at a time, and we can begin to see change. If he can destroy the home and family, the enemy can destroy the home and the family, he can destroy anything believe today are being challenged at every side. There, there's things going on rampantly and it's being challenged like, like never before. And at times, a lot of times we can get to a point to where we just kind of give up. We give in. Fear takes over. There's no hope. I want to tell you today, there is hope. We just got to realign ourselves back in a position to understand that God is for us, that God has a plan for our lives, that God has a plan for our marriages, that God has a plan for our families. And it isn't one just to merely exist or just to get by, but God has blessing for the home, for the family. You read in the story about Nehemiah, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. You can read it in Nehemiah, but Nehemiah was faced with a, just this huge challenge, the wall that was destroyed. You can only imagine they had to rebuild it, but people were discouraged. People were weary. Things looked chaotic. It looked like there, there would be no hope. As the Jewish people of Nehemiah's time began to re build the walls of Jerusalem, they too encountered opposition. And many of them also became fearful and discouraged. Have you ever been there before? Fearful and discouraged. In Nehemiah 4.10, it says this, Meanwhile, the people of Judah said, The strength of our labors is giving out. And there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. You look at our nation today, you look around and we can see where, where we're at and you can easily get discouraged. There is so much stuff. There is so much crazy stuff that, that's going on in the world. How and when. It just seems impossible. And it's easy to get fearful and discouraged. However, Nehemiah had a word from God. Nehemiah would not give up because he knew that rebuilding the walls was a cause worth fighting for. And I want to say to every father, every mother, every marriage, every single parent that's in the room today, your family is worth fighting for. Your children are a cause worth fighting for. Your marriage is worth fighting for. Nehemiah went on in chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. He says, therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall. At the opening, I set the people according to their families, 
with their swords and spears and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, fight for your sons, fight for your daughters, your wives, and your households. I believe that's a word of, that God is speaking to us today as a church, that we're to take this up and that we're beginning, that we are to begin to fight Amen, like never before. I'm not saying fight with one another. We've had enough of that going on. I'm saying that we fight for one another. But here's the deal about the wall. What was more important than rebuilding the wall was rebuilding of people's lives and their spirituality and the renewing of their faith. Just like Nehemiah rebuilt the wall, we too can rebuild and reclaim our families. This is God's heart. We want to see change in our world. We want to see change in our nation. This is where it begins, I believe. And it isn't just that we focus on Yes, on our families, but I believe God has given us a purpose. God has given us direction that we as a church use every bit of resource, every bit of an ability, every bit of of understanding that we have of the word, not just in our own families, but to be an example, to be a light to others in the world. But it starts right here. The enemy may, maybe has created havoc in your family, in your life, in your kids, your marriage. Just like Nehemiah rebuilt the wall, we too can reclaim our families. I want to say no matter what the enemy's done to your family or to your home, with God's help, I thank God for Dr. Phil. (laughs) I thank God for focus on the family. I thank God for all these different ministries that are there. Absolutely. I thank God for every Christian counselor in this valley. I thank God for every church that's in this valley. But with God, with God's help, I believe that we can rebuild a fortress that the enemy cannot penetrate. That the gates of hell cannot even begin to penetrate. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it just on the opinions. We can't do it by just observing social media. And I'm not saying everything on social media is bad. There's a lot of bad stuff on social media, and we'll talk about that another day. But with God's help, everyone say God's help. With God's help, I believe that we can win and begin to see change, amen, starting right here in our hearts, in our lives, in our families. Two of the most important things you can accomplish in your life are trusting Jesus, are surrendering your heart to him, laying down yourself and saying, God, I invite you into my life, a relationship with him. Amen. And the other is, is that we can do the same and lead our family to Christ. Not only for our own selves, it's not enough to secure our own eternity. God wants us, amen, to reach out beyond just ourselves, but for our entire family. The story of Paul and Silas in the Bible, we know the story. They were in prison, in jail, dark, dingy, cold, shackled up, and they began to praise and worship God, and they were set free. 
the jailer eventually come running out and said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? Acts 16, 31, it says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. I believe here at Centerpoint, God is calling us to rise up, to stand up, and to fight for our families. If the family and, and the home is the number one target of the enemy, of the devil, then it's important that we make it a number one priority in our life. First of all, we better be committed to God. Secondly, we better be committed to our marriage and to our families. And to be honest with you, our nation, we've gotten so preoccupied, so busy, so many things grabbing our attention, and we've neglected the family. And honestly, if I can be, we've not done a good job at it. We lead, as a nation in the world, we lead, so, we lead in so many different statistics that I honestly say as a pastor, I, as a nation, I, I, I wouldn't be proud of at all. Abortion, morality, sin. We've neglected this area. The enemy has made himself right at home, and he's come right in and he's created havoc and division in this area of the home. And I want to say to you today that your family, your children are worth the fight. Your marriage, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, they're worth, they're worth it. We have an awesome God. And his promises are true. His word's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the word says that no matter what comes against you, no matter what comes against you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. I believe there's no better time than right now to reclaim and rebuild the family wall. Paul wrote, mostly do the churches, but in this one writing, he began to write this letter. He began to write it out, and it was written to someone's house. When Paul wrote, it was normally to the churches, encouraging the churches or whatever, but this one, he began to salutations and began to greet everybody, but then toward the, toward the end of the first verse of Philemon, probably a book of the Bible that you rarely open up to. Some of you go, oh, I didn't know that was a book of the Bible. <laughs> Philemon. But Philemon 1, 2, it says this. And I, I love what Paul and how he, he wrote it out. Just the last few phrases of that, of that, um, of the first verse there, of the second verse. It says, to the church that is in your house, to the church that meets in your house. The question I want to ask you today is, is there a church in your house? Is church going on in your house? Is God, is the atmosphere of your home representing what the Word of God teaches? We're not perfect. I mean, I'm sure there's days you've walked in my home and go, I don't know if there's a church going on in this house. But the point I'm making today is, is there devotion going on in your house? Is there devotion? Is there, is there prayer going on in your home? First, just you individually. Men, is there prayer going on? Are you leading 
as spiritual leaders in our home? Are we leading out the church in our home? Are we reading the Word of God? Where are your footprints leading your family? Anthony was sharing with me just the other day, Heather, when she used to go hunting with her father. Anthony and I was reading this verse or the scripture. We're talking about this, and Heather used, Anthony used the analogy. He said, I remember Heather talking about when she was younger, when they go hunting together as a father, that she would walk in exactly the same footsteps as her father so that he, she wouldn't make any noise and just follow exactly where he would go. Where are your footprints leading? Where are your footprints leading? Where are your conversations leading? Where is your actions leading? Where is your attitude leading in our homes? I grew up in a home, and I don't say this boastfully, but I'm just, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for it. But in the early mornings, hearing my father pray. Before I ever got out of bed to go to school or high school or whatever, I could always, every day, my father was, was praying. He would pray over his family. I heard that many, many, many times. All I'm saying is, I believe all of us, we have room to, to grow. We have room to improve in this area. We want to see change. This is where it starts. It starts in the home. We can blame everything else. We can blame the government, and we know the government is so far from perfect. We can blame the church. We can blame the pastor. We can blame the school teachers. We can blame law enforcement. But I'm telling you, we would not be facing the issues we're facing today if we did not have this right. Is it too late? Absolutely. I believe the best is yet to come in this area for our lives. Band, you can come up. When we do our part to get our family and the word, the word then gets in them. We must begin to take back, reclaim, but not give up. Everyone say, not give up. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not giving up. Turn to your spouse and say, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Here's the deal. Let me read this in Romans as the band's coming. I know today this is a little, can be a little bit strong, a little to the point, but I, this, this is so important. We've got to get this. The next few weeks, we're going to dive in and have a great, great series. I know we are. Don't miss these Sundays. If you value this, if you value your families, if you value the Word of God, don't miss this because we are going to deep dive into the Word of God. Amen. And we're going to help a lot of people in these areas. Romans 5.12, where sin abounds. We can look at the world today and, man, sin It's just everywhere. We can get overwhelmed with it. What do we do with it? There's another part of that scripture sometimes we don't don't realize and we, we, we don't give it value. Grace does much more abound. 
God is greater. The grace of God is much more abound. Joshua 24, 15. These are just declarations that, we, that we've got to get into our spirit and in our heart and draw a line in the sand. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, period. We'll just we'll serve the Lord. I didn't, we're not perfect. We made mistakes. I get that. Grace does much more abound. Thank God for his grace. Thank God every day I thank God for his grace. We may not have all the answers, but God does, and we need him. Amen? I shared this with the men the other morning in our morning prayer. James 2.26, and we'll wrap it up with this. With God and we doing our part, I believe we'll see change. I believe we'll see revival like we've never seen it begin to take place. The key is with God, everyone say with God, and me doing my part. We can pray We can have prayer meetings every day, every night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And that's awesome. Don't get me wrong. Prayer is key and important. But it's me and God. And I think a lot of times we we separate that. It's like, We go to God and we pray and we want to see all these things, but then we forget about my part. The scripture in James says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Too often it's we, we separate it. It's, it's one or the other. And the reality of it is it's both. We need prayer. Prayer should be a vital part of our everyday life and our family and our walk with God. Prayer is essential. But then there's the part without faith. Our works are dead. We can pray and pray and pray for change in our family. But if we don't get up and begin to make some changes, if we don't begin to do some things in a new way, in a different way than where we were, we'll just continue to go down this road. A lot of people don't want to hear this, but you can't just pray your way into having a great family. Some things you have to pray and then obey for. Come on, pastor, don't go there. I'll pray, I'll pray. But then the Bible teaches this thing about obedience. It's not one or the other, it's both. We pray and we obey. Some things you must pray and prepare for. In other words, there's, there's some things you got to do. Some things you have to pray and sow for. Whatever that you reap is what you will sow. We can pray, but then there's, there's the action where we trust God. We step out in faith. We want to see change. We begin to sow in the direction of the change that we desire to see. And we pray. Some things you have to pray and stand for. Some things you have to pray and then you put on your weapon, the warfare almighty God, and you fight for it. God is challenging us, church. And I'm just kind of laying out a foundation for the next few weeks. But I'm hearing you. I want you to hear me. 
if we begin to get this in our spirit, right where we're at in our lives, the areas that we can adjust, amen, if all these young people that are, that are on the front row here and those that are listening today, if you can get this at the age that you're at today, amen, we'll, we, we, we will see the change come about in the generation. I don't want you to go through what a lot of parents and people have chosen to go through. We have counseling that's going on in our church and we, we, want, we want to help premarital counseling and we have couples that go through it. But I was talking with somebody the other day and it was just, I just so shocked of it wasn't necessarily in, in this situation but this couple are getting ready to get married and, and I'm, I'm just going, my God, through the lens that they've grown up and what they've seen and what they've been a part of when it comes to the family life. I go, no wonder we are where we were at. Thank God that they're stepping out and getting help in their lives. The lens that we've, a lot of people have just accepted, I guess this is just reality. This is just the way to be. And to think, not only get married, but then in just a few maybe a year or so down the road, they will start a family. And I'm going, their perspective of what family and that looked like was so far away from God's heart. Thank God that we're doing something about it. We're speaking into their lives. We're speaking into their, into their, into their marriage before they even take those first steps and pray to God that they'll begin to make do things in a new way. Amen. Do things not as though they were, but things that God leads them into, that they pick up the word of God and begin to establish their life in this area.